Um, uh, let's see. So I'm going to share my screen and just start with kind of going over um, the agenda for today. So um, this meeting is um, about the Women in Physics grants um, that have been awarded the past two years. We thought we would do the past two since you know, the virus kind of uh, affected both of those, those years. Um, also, just so that you know, the Women in Physics uh, grant I'm sorry, did someone have a question? Um, these grants are actually um, a subcommittee underneath the larger Committee on the Status of Women in Physics, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that. So the agenda today is um, a quick welcome from me. I am Angie Hype Walker, and I work at NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and I am the chair of this um, committee. Um, then we will go over introductions for all the different um, awardees that we have on the call. We look forward to meeting you. Then we'll have an overview from the chair of CSWP. Heather will join us at about 4.30. And then we have um, an, a presentation about all the different resources that are available to you here at APS. And um, Anne will be telling you about that. And then um, Caitlin and Simonetta will go over some of the findings. So after each year, after you are funded, um, oh, we might want to mute our mic. Thank you. <laughs> um, then we'll go over some of the major themes that we've seen and then the reports that have come in um, over the, the past few years. And then, of course, we want to have lots of time for questions and discussion. And also, this is really informal, so please feel free to raise your virtual hand and, or, you know, if you want to have a discussion during any of these, um, because it's very casual. We we're here to, to help you. <laughs> So we thought we'd start with just letting you know what our goals for this webinar are. Um, ultimately, we really want to build a strong and active women in physics community. And so we thought, of course, by introducing you to the other awardees, it, that could um, help propagate that. We also want to raise awareness of all the different resources that can be available to you and to help you be successful in what you're trying to do at your university. Um, obviously, we want to provide uh, ideas and best practices uh, that we've seen over the years, um, of course, because the ultimate goal is to have the highest impact um, possible. And then we want to answer uh, any questions that you guys have. So I thought I'd just give you a little bit of context. This is actually the, so five years of funding have happened for these women in physics grants. Um, and they started, uh, we only had a small budget, <laughs> it's still small, but <laughs> um, of about 10K for the first three years. And then we had an increase. Um, one of the things I want to draw your attention to is that in 2020, we had 56 applications, which is um, quite a bit more than normal, almost twice as, no as many. Um, the total number of awardees is, is about the same, again, because the money didn't, didn't change. But we're certainly excited about that. And we, of course, want to make sure um, people don't get disappointed if they, if they don't win. So um, if the numbers are going up, we might need to seek some additional funds uh, to make sure we can address any needs that there are. So um, I think we'll just jump into introductions. Um, so before we go to the, the universities, I thought we might start with um, the people who are kind of on this call sharing uh, with you. And so from APS, we have both Della and Ann. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing if that's okay so we can see one another as we start the introductions. If that's working. Okay, um, I stopped sharing, right? <laughs> you're thinking you you're really in. Shared. Uh, you never really shared. Oh, so I, I did think, not? Yeah, I think you started and then you took it off, Angie. So you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Della, would you mind posting those? Um, yeah, sure. I'll share the link. Hold on one Yeah, moment. I'm so, so sorry about that. So Della or Anne, and, and Anne, <laughs> if you guys would maybe start with some introductions. Sure. I'll hop in. I'm Anne Cornerens. I'm the Step Up Project Manager working at APS in the Project Development Department, and uh, excited to be sharing some resources with you all today, including 
the SEPA project, which I helped to run. Go ahead, Della. Hi, everyone. I'm Della Richardson. I'm the uh, Women in Education Program Coordinator. Fantastic. I think Heather had to pop out for a meeting, so we'll let her introduce herself <laughs> next. Uh, Caitlin, would you uh, please start? Uh, sure, for, for an introduction. Um, sure, I've been a member of CSWP for, this will be going on my second year. Me and G and I are in the same cohort. Uh, I've you know, been involved in a number of the grant awarding some committees, of course, including WIP on Women in Physics. And, you know, my day job is a researcher at SRI International, which is a nonprofit research institute. Great. Simonetta? Um, hi, I'm Simonetta Liuti. I am a professor at the, University of, at the University of Virginia. And I just joined the CSWP uh, this year. And so, um, so, th so this is a new experience for me and I'm, um, I'm just like, uh, it's actually been very exciting. It's just been just a few months, but it's been uh, um, a very rewarding and um, um, I don't know, just a great <laughs> thing to be here on this committee. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to interacting with you guys and see what your questions are. Great. So now we'd like to go to the schools. Um, we have a list that's just alphabetical. And um, if anyone from uh, the school is here, we'd uh, love to have you introduce yourself. So our first school is Caltech. Yeah. All right, then our second school is Clarkson University. My name is Mara Dwayne. I am an <laughs> professor at the Physics Department at Clarkson University. You were awarded by you guys last year, and we are very grateful to that. Ironically, due to lockdown, we couldn't do everything that we wanted, but we actually had good momentum going. So that's us. And I'm looking forward to be part of this in future as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Next, we have the University of California at Santa Cruz. Okay, next we have UC Berkeley. Yeah. All right, <laughs> Wayne State University. Hello. Oh, clear. Clearly, this is not alphabetical. I'm sorry. I thought it was an alphabetical list. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm Wayne State. Sorry. Hi. Uh, so I'm Nasheen Shah. I'm a, a professor in the physics and astronomy department. And um, yeah, we got the uh, the grant last year, right when all the COVID stuff started. So we had just started the society, and we had all these grand plans of you know what we were going to use the money for, etc. That hasn't happened, but you know, fingers crossed, we will get out of this, and we will actually be able to, you know, set up a more in-person community, do all the different things that we're, the, um, you know, we were planning to. Um, yeah, so excited to be part of this. Great, welcome, um, Southern Illinois University. Hello, my name is Tushari. I'm an associate professor of physics in Isayu Carbondale. So we got awarded last year, I think end of 2019, and we had made a huge plan and we organized, I mean, we planned a, something called STEM Confluence. We wanted to invite uh, men and women in STEM fields. And uh, even Provost was uh, very excited to give a keynote speech. And we planned for April 20th and never happened. So hopefully we will get back to it uh, soon. That's the plan. Thank you so Wonderful. much. Wonderful. And that's really what we're hoping today to do. We'll, we'll encourage all of you because we know we're, it's been a year, let's all say. <laughs> so just so that you know, lots obviously everyone is in that boat and just to support you and, and continue to try to keep up the enthusiasm so when it's possible to return that, that we all can. Georgetown, anyone from Georgetown? Hello. Um, there's actually a few of us here from Georgetown, but I can Great. start. Great. 
Um, so my name is Eleni. I'm a graduate student and the president of our new women in physics group. And we were can sort of second what everyone else has said. We were very excited to get this grant and had all this excitement of all the events we wanted to do. And then of course we went on lockdown, but we've still been able to like use the momentum to do a bunch of cool online events and looking forward to getting back to things. Wonderful. Like Great. Uh, University of Chicago. Hi, um, I'm from the University of Chicago. Um, I'm a third year undergrad. Um, oh, by the way, my name is Hui Ting. Um, <clears throat> and we got the grant like in 2020, but like after that, the lockdown happened. So we weren't able to like do anything we planned. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, let's see, next we have Pacific University. Um, okay, the University of Houston. Hello everyone, uh, this is Claudia Ratti. I am associate professor at the University of Houston and there is also uh, Vidusha Adlaka who is uh, uh, the graduate student who is in charge of, of the association online with me today. And uh, we also got our money last year and we were able to do some of the um, events before the lockdown, but most of them will have to be postponed. We did do something online, but we look forward to being able to go back to in-person meetings soon. Wonderful, yes. Um, how about Penn State? Hello, I'm Kaylin Berglund. I'm the uh, two, going on two years now, president of the Physics and Astronomy for Women Plus group here. Um, uh, we have adjusted our events uh, over the over the last year. We usually do a lot more uh, educational outreach in the community, especially supporting uh, young women in, in STEM. But uh, this year we have been able to focus more on um, our new branch of professional development events where we host discussions with um, special guests, sometimes um, the colloquiums or, or seminar speakers, um, and sometimes just friends of members who are willing to discuss with us their experiences as underrepresented scientists. And it's been a wonderful way to generate dialogue in our department about um, systemic bias and allyship and um, how we can all support each other and ourselves. Our, yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Um, California State University at San Marcos. How about the University of Puerto Rico? Hello. Oh, yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. Hello. <laughs> I'm Mayra Lebron. I'm a professor at the University of Puerto Rico in Rio Piedras Campus. I'm representing Dr. Carmen Pantoja, the is the the advisor of the group of women in physics here, which is in class today, then I just represent the, the group in Puerto Rico. Thank you. Oh, great, thank you for being here, welcome. Um, University of California at Merced. Okay, um, Washington State University. Washington State. University of Kansas, New York University. All right, Brown University. Ah, oh, Farah, fantastic! Great to see you. <laughs> um, I'm Farah Simpson. I'm a third year physics PhD student at Brown University. Um, we are also really happy that we got this grant. We actually anticipated getting this grant during COVID, so we had done a lot of brainstorming about virtual events and things that we could do to really bring our community together in this really difficult time, especially for first years, because they had a really tough year. 
And so we've been having a lot of events with food and just like community and virtual paint nights. And it's been, it's been really great. So we're really excited for things to be in person and us to be able to um, also do outreach events, which we've been having discussions about already. Oh, nice. Wonderful, well, welcome. Um, California State University at Long Beach. Hey, hi, I'm Chuhi Kwon. I'm a faculty member at Cal State Long Beach. And we have, I think, three of the student leaders are here, actually. It's, it's actually led by them. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> so they, they wrote the proposal and I supported it. And um, unfortunately, because of the lockdown, we were not able to do a lot of activities, but we had pretty rigorous process to be recognized as a student club in the university. They are done with all those paperwork. It's final one was submitted, um, couple of, I think a couple of weeks ago. And Maya has been actually leading the effort with that. Yeah, yeah she is here. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Hi, Maya. And thank you guys so much for making the best of the, the situation. <laughs> Uh, next, we have Iowa State University. Hi, um, my name is Emily Padabon. My pronouns are she, her, hers, um, and I am a third year undergraduate. I'm here representing the Society of Women in Physics and Astronomy, and um, we are really excited to have gotten the grant this year, and a lot of what we've done has just been organized completely by the students and we most of our funding has come from uh, selling donuts to engineers coming to physics classes in the morning. So we're excited to have a more reliable source for this coming year. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you for, for being here. Yes, and then we you. have the Missouri University of Science and Technology. Hello, um, my name is Dr. Bhattacharji. I'm a graduate student at Missouri University of Science and Technology. Um, another grad student, Yan Yan, is also present here. And the two of us wish uh, we were the grant proposal that we received the grant this year. And our uh, faculty advisor is also here. And we are very grateful to receive the grant and very excited to um, host the first event this year. Thank you. Oh, great. Well, thank you all so much for being here. We're, we're excited to meet you. Rice University. Anyone from Rice here? Uh, hi, my name is Hannah. Uh, I'm from Rice University. Uh, I'm the president of the Women in Physics group here at Rice. And uh, we won the, or we were awarded the grant uh, for this uh, year. Um, We've kind of been dealing with some Zoom fatigue from our members, so it's really hard to get people to be involved, um, even though we'd really like to kind of enact our plans in the grant. So um, I, I don't know if maybe this is the right format, but it'd be great to hear how some, or at least be inspired, you know, hearing how people are have gotten their members to be engaged. Um, and yeah, and I also see University of Houston people here, so we've worked with them before, but hopefully maybe we can catch up after this and something. <laughs> that's after a great point. idea. <laughs> and that's what we're hoping this will do, right? Yeah, here you'll hear some good ideas or you'll connect with another um, place that's that's close by. So yeah, thanks for holding this. Absolutely. Uh, then we have the Tennessee Technological University. Hi. I'm Mary Kidd, um, Associate Professor of Physics and the new um, faculty advisor for our WIP group that we are forming. Uh, we hope to go through the formal process to finish up that formation in the fall. So that's kind of what we've been occupied doing um, since we were awarded the grant this year. Um, we have been able to have in-person meetings. Tech has been meeting in person um, with social distancing. So we have been meeting in person, but nothing with like food or anything because that's against our, against the rules. That's right. <laughs> so we're and that's really forward. what keeps us all together. So. Yes. <laughs> so we're looking forward to, of course, um, expanding things uh, in the fall and, and doing a little bit more. But thank you very much for having us. Great. And uh, then Texas Tech. 
How about UC Santa Cruz? University of California, Davis. Um, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, UMBC. Brenna? Hi, uh, I'm Theodosia Gugusi. I'm the faculty advisor. I'm a professor in the physics department, and we just got formed. I think we got approved by APS in January. So it was a very nice, you know, uh, beginning to the year. So hopefully things will pick up from now. We have a fairly active group, not a very large one, but a fairly active one. Uh, Brenna is here to represent the students. Uh, the rest of the students couldn't make it because of uh, class conflicts, as you can understand. But uh, we're looking forward to hit the ground running in the fall and, you know, get organized. Thank you very much for having us. Oh, great. Well, welcome. We're excited to have you. University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Hi, I'm Manisa Kandula. I'm the faculty advisor. I'm an assistant professor. And we have uh, most of the students who are basically leading this program uh, here on the call. and. Uh, I want actually one of them to say what they have been uh, really doing. We did, uh, were able to do something virtual and we are hoping to learn more, but I would like one of them if they have something to say. Yeah, um, I have something to say. Um, I'm the co-chair of the new group, uh, the new work group that we're forming at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. A couple of things we have done is uh, we try to host like a general body meeting and a and also like game night, just to, because it's kind of hard as a new group to get participation. And I'm hoping that with this meeting, I learn a lot more from other groups, especially ones who have an active uh, group. That'd be amazing. And also thank you so much for giving us this grant. This gives us the opportunity to do many things in the future. Wonderful. Welcome. The University of North Georgia. Oh, I thought someone was popping up there. Then I have the University of Puerto Rico at Rio, at Rio um, Piedras. Yeah, that was me before. That was you. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it, was, it was two campus, one in Mayagüez and one in Rio Piedras. Okay. Thank you. didn't say the campus before, and then I just said, but we are from Rio Piedras. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you again. Um, University of the Sciences. I'm not sure where that is located, I must be honest. Um, University of Wisconsin, Madison. Hi, I'm Steffi Deem. I'm the faculty advisor. I'm an assistant professor in the engineering physics department. And Carolyn Schaefer is on here and I'll have her talk about, um, she's the graduate student that you know crafted the grant. Um, I just wanted to add before I turn it over to her that this is the women plus in plasma physics groups. Um, I'm really excited because plasma physics is one of the least diverse in all of APS divisions. And at UW, we have it spanning across campus in electrical and computer engineering, engineering physics, material science, and the physics department. So it kind of really brings people across campus. So Carolyn, do you want to talk about what the group has been doing and what the plans are? Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like Steffi said, we're kind of spread out. Um, plasma physics is spread out here across departments. So we kind of, we got we were awarded the grant at the beginning of this year. And since then we've we've started having regular virtual meetings to just kind of get to know each other and get a feel for things. Um, we've had guests, women guest speakers that are in the field um, kind of come to our meetings and talk to us about what they're doing. And we've gotten started on some outreach activities and some mentoring initiatives, so. Yeah, we're excited to, to keep it going. Great. Well, welcome to you all. Uh, next, we have Westchester University. Hello, my name is Juliet, and I am a fourth year undergraduate student in the physics department at Westchester. 
We just received our grant this past year and we've been working to establish ourselves as a recognized organization on campus. And while we have been able to have some virtual events, we're really excited to be here, gather some inspiration, some support, and really establish ourselves in our community. Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. And Queen's University? Uh, I guess that's me, probably. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm from Queen's University in Canada, Ontario. Um, I'm a uh, PhD candidate, uh, and I'm here with Laura Fissel, who's uh, my faculty advisor uh, and helper and advising in many things. Uh, so we just received a grant this year and we're starting the group. We're still in sort of a forming process. Uh, we, I applied under Women in Physics group name, but we very quickly changed that name into Gemini P, which is Gender Minorities in Physics group to be more inclusive for non-binary members and trans women members who are part of our group. Uh, and other gender minorities within our department. Um, we also already launched our pilot mentorship program, um, which is under, underway and the, uh, the students already meeting their mentors. Uh, we had our first uh, seminar uh, last week, uh, which was allyship in action to uh, help uh, encourage allyship from other members in our community who are not necessarily gender minorities because we need it. <laughs> um, we actually do have uh, sev several non-gender minority members uh, within our group and organizational group uh, running things and helping out, doing treasury work and things like that to just help and support us, which has been really nice. Uh, we have still a lot of plans for um, hopefully coming back to normal and meeting in person because a lot of our plans were like oh it would be nice to use this money if we got back in person <laughs> and did things um, absolutely so, uh, i hope that will uh, I, I hope to get inspired here on uh, what else we could do with the <laughs> wonderful well welcome and then we have one more from canada the university of ottawa might anyone be here from ottawa hi <laughs> Uh, my name is Olivia Ellis. I'm the president of our Women in Physics group at the University of Ottawa. Our name is PLASMA, which stands for Physics Leaders and Student Mentorship Association. So we're not just women in physics, but we strive to empower women and minority physicists. Um, so we're just a newly formed group. We just started at the beginning of 2021, and we're excited to spend our money, like everyone else said, when we can go back in person. Uh, but so far, we've done all virtual um, events. So we've done some EDI seminars where we've had like colloquiums that talk about EDI issues and different topics. We've also had some informal coffee chats where we just hang out on Zoom and talk about or rant about our day, whatever have you. Yeah. Uh, and we also have had like professional development seminars where we uh, teach people, you know, how to update your resume and how to get into the workforce after you've graduated. And we're also planning on doing some outreach programs to local high schools as well. So thank Great. you so much again for this event. Absolutely, we're, we're excited to have you all. And then the last one, I'm sorry, I skipped it before, is Gustavus Adelphus College. I just wanted to... Yes. Um, hi, I'm hi. so sorry, I skipped it. That's oh, fine. So, uh, so I am, uh, I'm the faculty advisor to our group. Um, we also got our funding right around the time of the lockdown, but we were able to put it to good use. We've started a, a women in physics seminar series. We also had an event where we, we bought the rights to this um, documentary picture scientist so that we could show it on campus. And we did a two day event. We showed it twice. We had a socially distanced um, uh, auditorium space that people could go as well as watching it virtually. And we had a, a panel of speakers from uh, our, our science departments on campus, as well as political science and communication studies to talk about it afterwards and field questions. We started a, a book club where right now we're reading Gender in Our Brains and we're reading Inferior Over the Summer. And then in the fall, we're reading The Disordered <laughs> Cosmos. All great ones. <laughs> And then we also use some of the money to stock our restroom up, which we're fighting to get it to be gender neutral. Um, but to, we're stock, we stocked it up with some um, feminine products from the Honey Pot, which is a black owned small business that makes sustainable women's products. 
Wonderful. Oh, gosh, you guys have been busy. The wonderful news. All right. So is there anyone on whose name or university we haven't mentioned? Um, I just want to make sure that we've covered everyone in our introductions. And thank you all for, for joining and for sharing, because that's really what we're hoping, you know, to keep you inspired, even in these challenging times, to continue forward. And it looks like um, next on our agenda is Heather, and I think she has joined us. Is that right? How to talk about the CSWP. Welcome. Thank you, Angie. Uh, so thanks for everybody joining today. I know for most semester people, it's last week of classes or exams, so it's a, it's a very busy time. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. And so my role here, uh, I am the chair of the committee on the status of women in physics for APS. And of course, uh, CSWP is sort of the overarching uh, committee that guides the Women in Physics Group Grant Program. And so I just want to give you a sense of all of the things that CSWP does to maybe think about with your own groups and also how you connect with APS more broadly. So in general, our mission statement is to provide effective programs, activities, and resources that advance education, diversity, and inclusion in the physics community. This is our last in-person meeting. Hopefully, we'll get to go back in person very soon. So uh, generally, there are sort of a list of priorities that were established for this group, and just to give you a sense of where our boundaries lie. So one of the priorities for uh, CSWP is to increase the fraction of undergraduate women uh, studying physics. Uh, that directly uh, impacts all of you. Uh, we really work towards enhancing and involving professional development activities. So mentoring, mentor training, professional skills workshops we've been putting on for several years now. We really want to understand gender-related issues in physics by encouraging research into their fundamental causes. So we, we, this is one of the priorities uh, to encourage that research so that we can use those sort of data-driven approaches really to, uh, to affect change, uh, to eliminate harassment, and really to promote equitable and inclusion, inclusive physics communities and workplaces. And finally, uh, our goal is really to propagate this understanding that everyone's responsibility to promote equitable and inclusive cultures uh, with where women are equal participants in the physics community. These are our general broad ideas uh, that sort of guide us in the community, uh, in the committee. And there are two main roles that we serve within APS. One is a programmatic role, which is what uh, we're here today. And the other one is sort of an advisory advocacy role. And so I kind of like to go over our different programs and what, what actually do we do at CSWP and see how you and your group and your department of community might uh, fit into this picture. So in terms of the programmatic programmatic role, of course, we, we have the, the Grants for Women in Physics group. That's why we're all here today. Uh, we also are connected and established originally the conference for undergraduate women in physics. So hopefully you've all had the opportunity to attend or will attend uh, these uh, conferences that happen throughout uh, North America, uh, usually in sort of mid-January. We also uh, are coordinated with the Step Up Project uh, to really encourage women to study physics at the undergraduate level through connecting with high school teachers. Um, and Ann Cornerens, who's here, is ahead of that project, which is hopefully going to grow. We run sessions at the April and March uh, APS meetings. Uh, so we have sessions relevant uh, to uh, women in physics. And you may have seen something called the Gazette laying around your department, or maybe you even receive it at the, in the spring. Uh, CSWP puts out articles uh, related to women in physics in this Gazette format, which is an uh, interesting read, and they're all online uh, as well if you haven't seen that. In addition to these sort of programs that we run, uh, one of our main uh, items is uh, the Climate Site Visit Program. And so, uh, oh, well, that was sort of fun. I apologize. Uh, my Bluetooth mouse is just gone a little bit nuts here, so let me just try resharing. <laughs> now you see the desktop, I bet. One more, one more try. Sorry, everyone. There's a speed feature to the, the roller on my mouse, which I accidentally <laughs> activated right in the middle of the talk, which caused it to accelerate. All right, let me try this one more time. 
So uh, we run uh, climate site visits, uh, mostly for large uh, physics departments, but also in national labs and large collaborations where folks will come in and talk with everybody um, to look at what the climate is and give suggestions for improvement uh, in climate in these departments. We also run uh, several awards. One of our most prestigious awards, the Maria Geppert Mayor Award, uh, who was uh, won last year by uh, Dr. Shanahan. And we also have the Blewett Fellowship, which uh, encourages women who are returning to physics research careers after a career interruption to give support for allow them to re-enter uh, that career path. Uh, so that's another component that we do on the sort of programmatic side of things. But like I said, we also do a lot of advisory and advocacy role, and that's one of our main roles within the American Physical Society. And so just to give you an example of some of the types of things that we advocate for or advise APS on, uh, include APS statements. So we're currently revising the 15.2 uh, statement on the status of women in physics. Uh, and so we're looking at the language and updating that to reflect the current, uh, current uh, times. In addition, we're working on a new statement uh, looking at the role of student evaluation of teaching, which a lot of research has shown bias against uh, women and uh, people from marginalized groups. So we're looking to advocate for a statement that APS would endorse. We also advocate for action uh, from APS. Recently, we worked uh, to try to get a ombudsperson at APS uh, for the community to have access to. A while ago, we were part of the group that worked on getting a code of conduct at APS meetings and creation of a new APS ethics committee, which is now going full steam. And just this last year, uh, we looked at increasing funding for caregiver grants to attend APS conferences uh, during a pandemic. So that's sort of the advocacy we do uh, uh, for the community at APS. And finally, we also sort of respond to issues brought forward by both APS members who will contact us or APS leadership will come to us uh, with a, a question. So, you know, brought forward by some APS members, some problematic publications where methodology was flawed that came up with um, really biased results. So we will respond to editors uh, on behalf of APS. Um, and right now, we're really working on looking at the impact of the pandemic on women physicists and how can APS uh, sort of lessen some of that impact. So that just gives you a broad idea of the types of things that CSWP does. Um, you can sort of find more information at this website or through uh, the, the QR code there. So that's all I'd like to say about that. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I just want to leave a few minutes to see if anyone had any questions for you, Heather. Thank you so much. We are here as your representative to APS, so please yeah. don't be shy to reach out um, to uh, CSWP or myself as, as the current chair. Um, we're, we're definitely here and, and uh, looking for ideas and issues and things you can bring to us. It looks like we do have one hand up. I don't know, Angie. Are you calling on people? Well, um, <laughs> hold on. I don't see hands yet. <laughs> I, I, I'll just, just speak help. up. <laughs> yes, go ahead, please. <laughs> I didn't see anyone else. So. Um, I was hoping you could tell us more about the site visits, the climate site visits. Yeah, so this is a program initiated by the chair of a department. It can also be a collaboration or a national lab, but let's focus just on the departments, uh, where the department will ask APS to form a, a subcommittee of uh, trained folks from CSWP and also the Committee on Minorities, so it's a joint site visit, uh, where people will come to, well, in normal times, uh, they will come and talk to students, postdocs, faculty, staff, uh, about the climate and are sort of trained then uh, to work with the, the department to develop um, some smart goals and an action plan of how they want to improve the climate within their department. And so it's a, it's a pretty intensive program really to uh, initiated by the department through APS. And I would like everyone to keep in mind CSWP, it is um, 
people are honored to serve on the committee. So think of that as your future um, activities. Uh, we're always looking for great recruits. And so um, just want to make sure everyone is aware of that. Uh, thanks again, Heather. Great. And now we're going to turn it over to Anne, who's going to talk about APS specifically and the various resources that they have available. Awesome. And Della also asked me if I would share the slides real quick from the beginning, Angie. And so I'm going to do that because I do have two minutes according to these slides um, before I was. <laughs> and I'm sorry that I'm such a ditz. I didn't know I wasn't sharing said slides. <laughs> had a very attentive attendee who tried to warn us. Um, so thank you to that person. Okay, now you have to tell me if you see the slides because I also would like to see all of you and it of course hid you all from me. <laughs> okay, so there you are. Okay, it's because you're on my other monitor. We've only been doing this for what feels like a hundred years, right? But still figuring it out. Um, so these were your slides, Angie, and we've got through welcome and introductions and the overview. So I'm meant to start at 445. We've got the major themes and questions, but we'll take questions along the way. Here are your amazing goals, build the community, raise awareness. That second one we did. So like everybody check number two, accomplished by Heather. Uh, I feel like we're building community already. So we're still working on one. Um, ideas and best practices. This is a little bit what I'm hoping to cover and some questions and some background information and 56 from 2020 and introductions. Oh, and all of us. This is very nice, Angie. Oh, it's lovely. All of us that are here today to talk to you and we're at me. So I will switch to my slides and I'm gonna have to reshare even though I learned today about switching sharing. I didn't, I didn't implement my, my new skill. Um, so I am here to talk about some APS programs and it's a lot of APS programs. I'm gonna go through kind of quickly um, because I'd like to hear questions. So if you have a question along the way, you can throw it in the chat um, and I can take it as we're going or afterwards. Um, I cannot see the chat, so somebody else will have to tell me or I will find it there. It is hidden behind this other window. Um, and if you have questions about other APS programs, you can let me know, but these are the ones that I'm gonna cover. To make it a little bit fun, um, we've got 10 different programs that we're gonna cover. They recommend a minute per slide, so this isn't gonna take too long. Um, they being you know, the PowerPoint gurus. Uh, but I wanna hear from folks if they've heard of the programs as I'm going through each slide. So when I get to the step up slide, the next one, we're gonna use the thumbs up emoji. So I want people real quick to practice using the thumbs up emoji go down to the panel, click on reactions, and then show me a thumbs up just to prove that we can do this. Excellent. And I just wanna share that if you're using the web browser because the feds don't let us have Zoom, yep. you, you won't have a finger. <laughs> you have anything else, Angie? No, okay, but you can turn on your video and put your thumbs up because then you will pop onto the window and I'll look for Angie. <laughs> You are exactly and just in case anyone no i mean and i need we've got to be inclusive here we got to make sure that everybody can do it um but we're gonna have some fun with that um so great practice round uh and then i also wanted to note that we're here to talk about different ideas for what you could potentially do with your grant and um i'm going to share ideas of how you could engage with some of these existing aps programs so I highlighted in yellow the sections where I hope you can see some cool ideas. So get ready with the reactions button because first slide, step up. Who has heard of step up before? Do we have any, we've got a couple thumbs. Ooh, good number, good number. And this is my program, so I'm starting a little biased, but also like to see all those thumbs. Um, so step up is a national community of teachers, physics researcher, physics education researchers, professional societies, including APS who have created these lessons to create more equitable high school physics classrooms and uh, conversations about equity to hope, uh, hopefully get more young women to go into physics in undergrad. Um, we have all of these resources freely available on our website, which is at the bottom of this page and every page. Um, and the couple of ideas I had for how to get involved, if you've heard of Step Up before and you've heard the whole spiel, 
we're really committed to engaging as many of the 26,000 high school teachers around the country that we can. So we actually have this step up dashboard that I'm showing it's at stepupphysics.org slash students provides resources for you to do outreach, including virtual outreach to teachers to get them as allies to, uh, to help with gender equity for physics. Um, you can also host a workshop to teach other students about step up. And for that one in particular, we actually have a standalone program if there are students that are involved in your group or if any of you are interested in being a step up student agent, um, that's going to open up in June. So you can go to our website and sign up to get emails from us as a student and you will find out more. Okay, so next project, get ready with your thumbs, three, two, one, the APS student ambassadors, not to be confused with the step up student agents that I just told you about. But any thumbs up for having heard about this program, which just started last year, a couple on page two. You're on over two pages of my Zoom screen. Um, so the Student Ambassadors is an APS-wide program looking for students who are uh, interested in this leadership opportunity, representing APS at their home institutions, sharing APS resources, kind of like I'm doing now, um, any undergrad or graduate student that has at least a year left. Um, there's some benefits listed here. It's a, like it says, a leadership opportunity, a way to get more involved in APS. And maybe if a lot of these programs sound really interesting to you, this could be a cool um, additional leadership opportunity. The applications are open and available. So you can actually, on a rolling basis, apply to be a student ambassador whenever you want. And I see the chat. And so Hannah's question of an online program or something you can implement in your local community in person Definitely um, step up would provide opportunities for both. The student ambassador also would have opportunities for both. Uh, over the last year, I know both of these programs and many of the programs that I'm showing you have been doing things over Zoom, been doing things via webinars um, and phone calls and that kind of thing. But step up, uh, the student outreach was originally developed to be in-person outreach to teachers in your community. And I know that the student ambassadors ideally would be able to share APS resources with students at their school in person, very similar to the women in business groups. So the next one, looking for thumbs up, if you've heard of our APS chapters pilot program, even newer, this might be the newest of all of the programs. And I'm not seeing any thumbs, but one thumb for the chapters pilot program. So I listed the institutions, there aren't that many, maybe your institution's taking part I did not cross-reference this with the list that Angie sent out. Um, but this is a pilot program at APS to support graduate students, postdocs, early career scientists, so a wider range here. Um, and there's currently open applications for institutions. So how do you get involved in this case is, it's the institution applying, but some, we've got faculty members here today. Are you interested in having an APS chapter to support students, postdocs, early career scientists at your institution, or maybe for the students on the call, are you thinking about at your institution or at maybe a future grad school, um, future lab or other institution where physics is happening? If you think that they should have uh, a chapter, the chapters program manager told me nothing like a student writing to an institution and saying, hey, do you have one of these chapters to be a motivator to, to get this infrastructure put into place? So next one, National Mentoring Community, I think a lot more of you will have heard of. So how many thumbs up am I getting for NMC or the National Mentoring Community? Quite a bit more. Oh, and an in video, video one, thank you. Um, the National Mentoring Community is a mentoring facilitation to develop relationships between uh, undergraduate students and mentors for African American, Hispanic American and indigenous undergraduate students. Um, so they had a recent conference and wanted me to emphasize that the membership is free. You can sign up today and join and match with a mentor. Um, but one of the things that I did on this slide with my recommendations is, have you, do you know about people who have taken part in NMC? Do you maybe want to reach out to the program and see if they'll have somebody come speak about this mentoring program? I remember one of our groups uh, talked about a cool mentoring program that you started at your school what kind of national resources here could you use? What kind of expertise do they have that they might be able to um, share? So I would encourage you across the board, oh, I did not fix the URL on this one. So in general, use the URLs at the bottom of my slide, but I can fix this one before I give it to Della to send out. Um, but reach out uh, through the website, through the contact point, uh, APS is here to help. 
public engagement. Anybody ever taken part? I, I, assuming everybody's heard of public engagement, but APS public engagement activities. Anybody thumbs up on having taken part in one of these? A couple, a couple new names, I think. So the the emphasis that they wanted me to share was the recent wiki editing course that was on women in physics held at the March meeting. Um, I also added Physics Central here as a resource because there's not a wiki course as far as I know to sign up for right now. So keep an eye out if that's something you want to do. Definitely check out the resources on Physics Central if you're doing public engagement. Um, and I love the idea of maybe reaching out to these folks and finding out about holding a wiki edit a thon, I think that's what it's called, um, with your program, right? Once we could be in person, but also editing Wikipedia via Zoom could actually be a great way to combat some of that fatigue. I'm a little tired of staring at small pictures of people, but being on Zoom and doing a project together could be a great way of engaging some folks at your school. Uh, APS Bridge Program. Anybody heard of this one before? And very excitingly, APS Bridge Program has now spread to multiple other disciplines. Maybe you've heard about the AGU Bridge Program or the ACS Bridge Program because other disciplines. This is, I think, the winning, the winning program. It has, I think, it's the oldest of the programs that I've shared so far. It's been going on for about 10 years um, and is committed to increasing diversity in graduate education, um, working with bridge institutions. And so my suggestions here were learn more if you're one of the people who hadn't heard of the bridge program. They've got some great information at their website. Um, maybe see if there's a program near you. See if there's an institution listed on the bridge program website that is doing this work and you could get involved in um, and potentially inviting somebody to come speak. How, you know, how can we be working together across intersectional identities to think about diversifying at every stage, but this one in particular is thinking about graduate education. QWIP, this one's gonna win. Who's heard of QWIP before? Anybody? A couple people? But I'm actually curious, and I'll ask this at the end of the slide since there's all these thumbs, I do wanna hear how many people have gone to QWIP. Everybody's heard of QWIP, so wait until the thumbs up go down, and then I will ask you again if, if you've been to QWIP. We'll do that at the end. But the cool things I wanted to share that um, they do have a APS Engage community that was launched with the virtual conference that was held this year. So if you haven't um, gotten involved in that, even if you went to QWIP in the past, there's an online community hosted by APS through APS Engage. Um, you can join that at the website, which is correct at the bottom of the slide. Um, and that the, uh, the application date for QWIP 2022 is also already on the website of August 30th. Um, so now, at the end of the slide, I want to see thumbs up from folks on this call who have actually been to a QWIP. Good number, good number. Amazing, amazing. I love to see it. I've also been, but I don't know where my reactions button is because it is hidden. Okay, so we're at eight out of 10. There are only three more. Who has heard of APS IDEA? I feel like I should have put these all on a timeline. Pretty new, started in 2020 had an amazing outpouring of support from the community with 100 teams working to empower departments to improve equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, and I did just a small screenshot. This is maybe a quarter of the full list of institutions, because I know I love to you know, look through the list and find my institution to see if it's there. And that's the key way to potentially get involved. Again, an amazing group of people who are committed to diversity and inclusion, potentially at your university, um, if you are able to support their work or have them speak to you about what they're doing and see how your women in physics group can align with the goals that they're creating for, for the uh, organization. Oh, and that URL was wrong too. I'm catching my own mistakes here, but if you're catching them too, I'm also disappointed. Last two, APS careers. Have you taken part in any APS careers opportunities? Specifically, I've got Future of Physics Days here, some webinars. Maybe you've seen a talk by Crystal Bailey, who does amazing work, or Midhat Farouk in that department. Um, and so I couldn't list them all. Tons of amazing resources. I think some professional development and career opportunities for your Women in Physics group grant would be amazing. Um, so I said to check out the website, use the resources to develop some programming have a webinar watching party. I really liked this one, like especially when we're all back able to hang out together, there's still gonna be amazing virtual resources 
but we will all be tired of sharing it, sh staring at screens. So get some popcorn, watch a webinar together about career development, and then talk about what do you want to do? What, what are you thinking about for your career? What steps do you need to take to get to the next place in your career? Um, and you can reach out to APS Careers. They do have speakers, um, so they're available um, if, you're, if you're looking for something in particular. Uh, I saw two comments in the chat, so I'm gonna pause to note that Angie uh, is recommending some great videos from CSWP, link to there, if you're registered for the April meeting. Um, and then Adina's question about the IDEA program. They have said that based on the overwhelming number they got last year, they are not committing to doing anything until 2022, basically. So I don't know that there's not right now a date in 2022 that there might be applications, but I would sign up to be informed on their listserv and then hopefully hear about it next year if and when they launch the next round. You're welcome. Very last one. And I will be very surprised if we get any thumbs up for this one. This is a brand new program that we shared with CSWP recently. Um, so it would be strange if anybody in the community had heard about this still to be funded um, program. But if you're, uh, if you're going to be in grad school next year, um, or in grad school now, or know people who are uh, women in graduate programs, um, there's going to be this conference with career preparation and mentoring support um, tentatively in Chicago in February 2022. And that is my last slide. Happy to take questions if anybody has any extra. And thank you so much. That was great. I even learned a couple things, I must, I must admit. <laughs> So we'll pause just for a second to see if anyone else has some questions for Anne. So we're hopeful some of those um, different programs might spur ideas for you to do, obviously, at, at your um, location. And you'll be able to follow up with any of us. I'm sure we'll have emails and whatnot around so that um, if you guys have questions later, you can reach out to Anne directly um, to get answers. I see a hand again, Angie. And Kaylin, I don't please correct my yes. Kaylin, hi. Uh, could you tell us more about the student ambassadors program? No, not really, because that's all the information I got. Um, <laughs> Is there anyone here who's part of it who could tell us about the like what what the responsibilities are like and the time commitments? It's a very good follow-up question. I'd love to hear if somebody here has taken part. I'm gonna throw the link to that in the chat too, so that you can look into it a little bit more. And then this is another example that I know that the program manager would be very happy to hear from you. So please do reach out to them to get more information. They piloted it. They basically started it right before COVID. And so the first class kind of, of, of ambassadors was really over that time when we were all trying to figure out what was going on in the world. Um, and now they have this rolling, so, so I do know one other thing, they have the rolling application, so you can apply at any time and then kind of get onboarded into the program. Um, and it's very scaffolded where there's opportunities and resources that are regularly shared with you, but your specific question about specific expectations, I would check the website. And if it's not there, then I would email them to make sure you understand what the commitment would be. Great. Well, thanks again, Anne. And we are right on schedule. So thank you for doing that. Um, so next, next, we're going to talk about what we've heard things we'd like to also encourage you to do is at the, um, as you wrap up your program, your funding in this particular WIP program, um, you're, you're asked to write a report just so that we can um, take that knowledge and share it forward with new awardees. And so we have both Caitlin and Simonetta who are going to share with you um, after going through the five years of reports that we have. And again, not everyone filled them out. So we're here to encourage you to do so <laughs> when your time comes. Um, just some of their findings and we're hoping that will help you as well um, going forward. So Caitlin or Simonetta? Sure. Um, okay. I realize I'm not really sharing in presentation mode, but hopefully everybody can see my screen well enough. Okay, great. Thanks, Anne. <laughs> great. So thanks, Angie. So, right. So as Angie said, uh, you know, we've gone ahead and 
sort of summarized some kind of peer to peer advice from former uh, from former whip grant whip grant awardees. Uh, to, you know, from about 2015 to about 2019, I recognize there are a number of 2020 winners on the, oh, Angie? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. I thought you were talking. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> okay. Um, great. Uh, on, the, on the call today who weren't able to, you know, spend their funding last year. Um, so, so, you know, what we've done here is we've sort of picked out some major themes. And, you know, as we think about moving from, maybe moving from a COVID world to potentially post-COVID world, um, I, I think that a number of these themes are more or less evergreen. So maybe they can, you know, maybe they can apply regardless of where we're at. Uh, okay, great. So, you know, one of the bigger themes here, and this is actually you can see on the left is sort of a word cloud from all of these 18 uh, responses that, that we got over the last five years or so, four or five years or so. So you can actually see kind of the, you know, the words that pop out. Um, you know, one of the major themes, of course, is expanded inclusivity of the group. And we've heard a lot about that today, and that can maybe serve as a discussion point later uh, if, if people want to. Um, so what does this mean? So you know, a lot of a lot of former awardees kind of suggested using, you know, your school's whip group as a platform to sort of amplify the voices of other represented groups, and then of course, you know, be sure to be inclusive in your own group, right? And this includes gender inclusivity. A lot of us have already talked about this, um, but you know, maybe it serves as a point of discussion or a point of um, just a point to think about. Um, a big theme has been to leverage networks for events, right? You might have, you, know, you might already consider this, but leverage networks for events, um, but also, you know, leverage events to form lasting networks. So this this is sort of twofold, right? Uh, there's sort of some some overall advice to be sure to partner with other student organizations and sort of leverage combined resources um, in such a way in such a way that it seemed like a whip group wasn't competing with them. So that was sort of a theme that popped up uh, throughout some of these reports uh, was to sort of make sure that, for example, you partner with SPS or you maybe partner with a, a women in STEM group um, rather than maybe uh, maybe holding any events that could be seen as, as competitive uh, and therefore leverage combined resources. Uh, and of course, uh, We've already heard about this today, but there was there was advice that propagated throughout these reports to be sure to even hold casual events among your members, right, and focus on forming lasting bonds as well as you know more collegial type bonds. That, I mean, maybe that seems obvious, but it's certainly a it's certainly an important consideration for for our types of groups. And the final point, and Samantha is going to touch on this a little bit more, is. You, it probably occurs to everybody on this call, but to make sure that you have departmental support as much as you can get it. What does that mean? So, you know, regular communication with faculty, with department heads, and uh, also some strategies for sustainable funding. That was sort of a focus topic that we picked up on when we were going through these reports. And so that's the subject of the next two slides are some sort of focus focused advice from three different groups on that topic of uh, maintaining a sustainable group. Simonetta? Yes. yes, so, um, right, so when we went over these, um, all of the, uh, the reports, so we saw that um, not in all, in, 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 so many reports didn't have uh, um, any suggestion or any, um, uh, idea on how to uh, make their group sustainable, but some of them did, and 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 this is actually very useful uh, information that we'd like to um, just put here as a question to you also to 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 consider, and uh, um, I, I would like to know you know what your opinion is on this. So if you have questions, just please you know um, ask. So. Um, Exactly. So this is from uh, um, the uh, the Puerto Rico group. 
Um, so uh, what do you do, you know, to be to be to form a group that is sustainable? This is this is very important because think about it. You know, there are many of these uh, groups, you know, involve undergraduate students and even graduate students, and then students come and go. And then they come and go faster than what we, than what we really, um, you know, think sometimes. And so, so it is important that a uh, that, that that whatever program is formed uh, keeps keeps being there. All the good things that that have been accomplished get uh, get propagated and, and they get built on. Not not just not just propagated, but they get built on and 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 they take their own their own life. So uh, so the, the the group in Puerto Rico, for instance, said, you know, I encourage taking advantage of external resources and to partner with other graduate with other uh, student organizations. So these are both very important. So to partner with other students organizations, other established student organizations, and I'm sure that you can think about, uh, you know, which ones are there at your institution. Well, the first one that will come to my mind is the SPS. The SPS, you know, is there. Okay, so so maybe that's important to be talking to them. And uh, um, and as well as external resources that are you know uh, institution specific again, and uh, um, then oh the important thing and this was the, I think this is this is this is a very important point here that was brought up by the group at the University of Maryland is to go to your physics chair to the to the chair of your physics department and uh, um, and uh, and start. Uh, um, uh, discussing about having a, an annual budget. So now you got these funds, and let's see that. Let's view these funds as a as a startup fund. So you got you know you got clearly the the, the recognition from the community, and so uh, it is important that, um, that 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 the chair, that the leadership of the department understands that there has that there there has to be a, an, an effort from the department in order, in order to make this um, a sustainable. Event and so this will not be the same amount uh, <laughs> that you will not have exactly you know probably matching funds as what as what you obtained from the grants or maybe yes or maybe this is something to to it's 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 a it's a discussion to start uh, uh, with with your with your chair with the leadership in the department I would say not just the chair but also uh, DI committees uh, and 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 uh, you know, get them involved and get them to talk to the chair also. And and and, uh, and and get this discussion going. So uh, there is slide three, I guess. Um, yes. So uh, also the Stanford group, pretty much uh, a, a the a similar um, a similar uh, response as the as the previous two groups. And uh, um, so. Um, Right, so this is more about also communicating in class and uh, um, you know, try to assemble events that will be helpful to students. Okay, so panels. So this is more, the accent of this group is also on, on communication, on communication that you go in, 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 you know, inside the department. One thing that sometimes departments have is not just the web page, but you know, screens around the department that have several announcements, announcements of of colloquia announcements of you know I don't know events on campus events uh, elsewhere like I don't know things that have that have been discovered in 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 in, in um, uh, you know whichever field of physics maybe there should be announcements uh, about this um, about uh, this too about women's group groups and uh, um, yes and so this is this is so 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 some summarizing. So we have the idea of just go talk to your chair. Let's make this sustainable. So the, the most important thing is funds and communicate, communicate, reach out, reach out to other similar groups that are established already. And let, let's try to, you know, try to get, um, uh, you know, ideas on them on how to, to remain, you know, like to, to keep on being and, in, in, you know, like existing <laughs> and then and get the communication going at, at all, at all levels. And that's all I have to say. I mean, and, and I'd like to know actually what you think about this. Thank you, both Simonetta and Caitlin. So we are, um, so those are kind of some summaries that we've seen so far in the reports, but um, that we're open now. We have um, lots of time um, for discussion, for questions, for sharing. Great, you know, if you guys have great examples of things that really worked, um, particularly during the shutdown time, um, please think about sharing that. 
and even you know reach out if you don't feel something right now please um again reach out you have della's um email address because she sent you how to join the call today um any of us would be happy to to answer questions for you but we'd like to open the floor um for questions or comments there are some questions great della's saying <laughs> I will go over here um, and thank you. We have the sheet up for questions. Oh, this is a great one where people, um, they're asking about offering um, groups or speakers honorariums um, to their invited guests. Um, and they're asking if others are also paying, you know, to acknowledge um, one's time and energy um, up. And I think, Particularly right now, my colleagues of color are certainly seeing too many offers coming in to speak where they can't do it, um, you know, for free every time. And so it certainly is a, a very thoughtful thing to offer an honorarium, I would certainly say, as does Darsa. <laughs> um, how, have any of you tried to pay for a speaker um, to give a seminar or to jo join one of your meetings or activities? change my view here so I can see more faces. <laughs> um, got a hand raised. I, I, I guess I have a, I'm probably the only one. <laughs> yes, uh, so we uh, um, just managed to, uh, sorry, my internet connection is probably really bad. I hope you can hear me. Um, so yeah, we just had our uh, first uh, seminar, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, we, we're really fighting hard to make sure uh, that everybody agrees and that we can provide honorariums to speakers. I think uh, I think it's important to do so because I feel like a lot of us are already disadvantaged in many ways being underrepresented, part of underrepresented groups. And then we tend to do additional work <laughs> to help support each other and then educate others. And I think that that work is very important uh, and just as valuable as a research presentation uh, within institutions. So um, I know that uh, some of our faculty are still maybe not convinced about it, but I think we're making progress. So we use part of our uh, Actually, our first ever use of our APS money <laughs> that we got from you uh, to pay an honorarium for a speaker who gave amazing lecture on allyship. So <laughs> it's uh, something that we try to uh, we'll try to establish a uh, permanent uh, way to do so uh, with our department head who, who's already been in talks with us to provide some funding in future for that, and hopefully that works out. So. Okay. That's great. And again, that is a great way to spend your funding um, to get some someone to speak to your group virtually, you know, at this time or in person later. That's absolutely a, a great way to do it. And for those who aren't following the chat, um, I appreciate. Thank you so much um, for putting in the the books that were mentioned earlier for perhaps a book group. Um, so I think that's um, great. And I can definitely tell you the um, the How Science Got Women Wrong book is very exciting. Well, not exciting, but <laughs> eye opening. I think is the word. So, um, do keep a look on on there as well. Um, let's see. Were there other comments, Stella, or questions, Stella? I, um, I have my view all crazy here. Um, um, yes, yeah, someone asked, is it okay if your grant money spending doesn't exactly follow your your budget proposal? And of course, the answer is yes, as long as those funds are being um, used towards a women in physics um, group activity. So um, that's great. And again, we will send you links to these things. Um, Dell is trying to answer them uh, as quickly as on the fly as possible. Um, but we're also listing here ways to connect to everyone on the call. Um, so there, that'll be uh, just a nice thing to have afterwards. And um, she's also put in the books for the book club. And the disordered comma cosmos is amazing. Um, again, another, I don't mean to oversell, but these, these books are, are really good ones um, for uh, your group to, to consider um, sharing. 
And of course, summer might be a great time for you guys to gather virtually, if it must be, to, to plan out your some fall things. Um, maybe thinking about a couple of the things you've heard here or other things um, that, that maybe you have thoughts about. So um, we definitely want to encourage you to hit the ground running in the fall, where hopefully you'll be in person at your particular university. Um, fingers crossed on that. Um, so. Oh, Dars, a very important comment <laughs> and pay them double. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So if you invite um, a person of color to come and speak about diversity issues, um, that is a no, no. Absolutely. If you have not asked them to speak about their science um, first. So point um, for sure. So does anyone else have any questions? that we could help. Speaker suggestions, that's a, a, a good one. Um, and it's a little bit sad, APS used to have a, um, a pretty good list of female speakers, um, but they, they haven't been keeping that up, um, meaning it current. So um, I know that I've even used the 500 women scientists are you guys familiar with that group? It's not APS uh, sanctioned or, or anything, but um, it's a list of women scientists who've signed up and you can search on just physics um, in, in the search engine. So I just thought I'd throw that out as, a, as one. And thank you for people who are putting names in, in the list. Another great idea, of course, is to start with any of your alumni. Uh, hopefully you have some women who've gone on maybe to graduate school. <laughs> and so um, thinking about that would also be um, maybe in a good starting place. Um, ah, thank you, Anne, for the link to the women in science. <laughs> I know they continue to work on the platform, so that's nice too, because the searching has become a little bit easier um, as well. Another thing we are very open to hearing from it, you about is the application process. Did you find the questions we were asking um, informative? You know, it, was there anything about the application process we can think of improving um, going forward? Um, so we want you to know we're open to hearing both constructive criticism and, and good points for all of you to share. So um, well, it's exciting. We had 50 people at one point on the call today, so I was nervous it would just be us <laughs> by ourselves. So I'm really, really happy that that wasn't the case. And um, we hope you found it somewhat informative and maybe they'll question. Um, I believe Della would have to answer that. Um, I'm guessing so. Anne, do you know? Perhaps Della is on mute. Do you know, Anne? I think you should reach out to us and ask because I'm sure it is an option. Yep. But tell us. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> I have another and the hand raise alerter from Kaylin. Ah, Kaylin, please go ahead. Hi. Me again. <laughs> I had a couple recommendations of like events and activities that our group has had success with at Penn State. Fantastic. Um, Last fall, we got the first colloquium, colloquium slot of the year in the department um, to host a panel discussion about the experiences of underrepresented students. And we had good attendance and engagement. And of course it revealed how far we have to go based on the questions that we got. But um, I think it was a really good way to start dialogue in the department about sense making and theories of change and just basic things like give your students some positive feedback they need it like <laughs> um so i and it's good uh advertising for the group as well since you reach a, a wider audience it's a nice way for the department to show support for our voices and our activities by prioritizing it in an official capacity in that colloquium slot um, we're also working on a series of posters celebrating underrepresented scientists in math, physics, and astronomy. Um, so keep an eye on the um, Penn State uh, uh, Physics and Astronomy for Women Plus page. I'll put a link in the chat. I, hopefully by the end of summer, we will have a page up where you can access these posters and print them for your own departments. 
Nice. I, I also recommend the posters made by the Perimeter Institute. Um, <clears throat> they have some nice ones. Oh, yeah. We already put those up. <laughs> Great suggestions. Thank you for sharing those. And I love all the ideas I've been hearing, like stocking, stocking the bathrooms and uh, book clubs, all of it. It's great. Oh, great. And Della Portland. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I wanted to ask a question. So how, how was the, was the colloquium well attended? Were you happy about the, you know, the, 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 the faculty's response or? Yes. Um, I, we had uh, between one and 200 people attend um, and it's recorded. Um, so I'll try to track down the link and put that in the chat too. It'll take me a few minutes. Um, I started it off with a like 10 minute presentation about um, like, we're all part of a bias society. We all have biases. Let's acknowledge that. What does it look like? How to, how to call things out, how to report things, how to be supportive ambiently like amplification and self-care like mental health resources um, just to provide some context and vocabulary for the discussion and then we had um, a couple of undergrad and a couple of grad students um, all women um, of various additional underrepresented statuses who volunteered to participate and we did provide honorariums um, oh, wow i definitely recommend it uh, it's yeah. part of uh, we collaborated with the ats idea team on this too i'm part of that as well <laughs> Um, so it, it's a good way to get the conversation started and getting the community to agree that this is an important topic. Mm -hmm. And um, someone mentioned it during the introduction, and I just put it in the chat, is the Picture a Scientist movie. Um, we were able to do, again, a viewing here at NIST as well, and it was really powerful. We had then like chat sessions for a few days following our opportunity to watch it. And um, it was really, I was very impressed, even with the, the gentleman noting like, wow, I can't believe that really happened. <laughs> Although sometimes you want to go, oh, you've heard it, you've heard it a few times now. <laughs> but, but I definitely uh, rec recommend that. that. Anyone else with any comments or questions? Yeah, I, I want to add no one. Sorry if, I, if you see my hand raised in the chat. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I just want to add on this picture. So we have been collaborating with the climate committee in the department because we are very so. Uh, so together, uh, the idea was we watched the picture of scientists and had a discussion. The entire department, and I think we also plan to do in another session if someone couldn't attend that uh, because it was for the entire department. So we did collaborate on a picture of this and we also plan to do this collaboration more in future. And it's uh, good to know that that's a good way to go ahead. And thanks for all the speakers and guests and the books. I think those two are really amazing ideas. We dropped with the next for the next semester, definitely. Wonderful. Well, we're so excited that you guys took the time to, you know, try to uh, connect with others and hear some good ideas. Um, and we're going to try to keep connected. Uh, we really hope to, you know, kind of, especially in this challenging time, uh, connect us all a bit more. Again, sharing ideas, sharing successes, sharing sad times, <laughs> you know, something happens like that. But uh, we're here for you and we're advocates, so we're supporting you. And um, we just want you to know that and feel that. So we hope this was helpful to you and that we can um, maybe connect again in the future and continue to share ideas though. Um, again, that link will be available and I know Della will send it out soon and we can continue to build like a sheet of ideas for, for sharing. Um, so thank you all and have a great Monday evening. Thanks everyone. <laughs>